talking about getting voltage science to Priya. Let's talk about what an headless CMS is. So how many of you guys know already what an headless CMS is? Alright, so what is it? Can you give him a mic? Uh, you can say your name and then you can tell me for it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Sami. Yeah, I'm a WordPress designer for the end and I'm a president. So headless CMS is like uh, basically like you can have WordPress as a backend and frontend can be anything. You can have React or you can use anything apart from uh, WordPress if you want. So you can have your customization built on frontend. Absolutely. Can we have a round of applause for Sahil? <laughs> okay. So let me demonstrate that to you with this robot. So let's say this is our uh, app. And let's say the body of this robot is our backend and the head is the frontend. So this is a usual architecture generally if you talk about WordPress or Drupal. That's how it looks like. So you have a backend and then you have a frontend. What if we do something crazy and we chop his head off? So what are we doing over here? We are separating your backend from the frontend. So you have a separate frontend, you have a backend. Now this thing is called decoupled CMS. And you can connect your backend with the frontend with the help of APIs. So these APIs could be REST API, you can have GraphQL. So you can actually get the data. So basically your backend is serving as content. You're going to provide the content to the frontend and you can access that with the help of APIs. If you only have backend, that is called headless CMS. Why is it headless? Because it doesn't have head. It's just content. So, for example, you can use WordPress as just a content management system. And then when you talk about frontend, you can have your frontend anything. You can have it in React, you can have it in Vue, you can have it in Laravel. So, it actually opens a new world of endless possibilities for you when you actually decoupling it. So, that means you can deliver it anywhere and you can connect it with the help of APIs. So if you talk about the difference, the decoupled CMS is proactive and the headless CMS is reactive. So decoupled CMS, it prepares the content for presentation and pushes it to the delivery environment. And the headless CMS just manages content, it just sits there and wait for you to provide, with ask for it, and then you can have your content anything that you want. So basically when you talk about decoupled CMS, it is something where we know what our frontend is going to be. So when we have decided, okay, they want to build up frontend in React. So that's when we will be decoupled CMS. When we talk about headless CMS, which means it doesn't have any head, it's not decided, you can have it in any uh, of the forms that you want. <coughs> so why do you think headless CMS is gaining popularity? So let's look at the Google Trends. So if you look at the Google Trends in the last 10 years, you would notice that in the year 2015, there has been a, a trend that is increasing for headless CMS. So why do you think headless CMS? So who can tell me that why do you think headless CMS will be beneficial for us? Yes? Anyone? Yes? Go ahead. So my thought about headless CMS is that because uh, now the platform is not the just the web. Now people are moving from web then to mobile devices, handheld devices, stack and everything. So when you are developing multiple platforms, you cannot have like multiple backends available for everything. You can have one backend and multiple frontend. That is one of the reasons for being the headless payment growing popularity. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Sajas So that is the session needs to be interactive. I am not here just to talk. So let's talk together, we are here to learn something and it's okay if you are wrong, I am sure this is always the first time for everyone to learn, so it's okay, you can give wrong answer, it's completely fine, okay? So basically it talks about separation of concerns, it allows you to use JavaScript UI libraries like React or Vue or Angular to build your themes and these libraries allow you to create a richer user experience and help deliver a better performance. So first is the flexibility, you can have your frontend in, in React or Vue, so it basically opens the world of new possibilities. Uh, it also talks about security. Why do you think handless CMS uh, frontend will be secure?
So the main thing is that when you have your JavaScript application, frontend application, you are accessing all of the content via REST API, which means that hackers won't be able to get hold of your data because for them it's just pure HTML and CSS with the data. It's also future proof. So for example, you build an application with the headless CSS today and you build it in React. Tomorrow you have a better requirement and, and client wants you to move on a different architecture altogether. You can actually make that. Easy customization in the front end, which means back end developer and front end developers can work separately. So the front end developer can say, okay, I want this particular data, you provide to me in form of JSON, and I can just use that in the front end application. They don't actually have to wait. Unlike in WordPress, you know that you have PHP, you have JavaScript, you have HTML, all clubbed together. And definitely it will be faster development as well. So the benefits of using headless WordPress CMS versus performance that we may discuss. You can use model libraries, uh, you have security and scalability, and it's future proof as well. So if we build a front end in JavaScript, how do you think it will affect our site SEO? So you guys have worked with React, right? I will see many hands who you have worked with React. So how many of you have worked with Create React app? One, two, three, four, nice, okay. So in Create React app, what happens? When you build an application, we take the entire content and we put it inside of a div with an ID of root. However, have you ever tried checking the page source of that? What do you get inside of it? It's just empty. Which means that all of the execution, all of the rendering happens in the browser when the JavaScript is executed. The page comes empty from the server. So that is not really good. So how do we actually solve that? So let's talk about that. So how many of you know how indexing works on the JavaScript powered application with Google? Okay, so that's something new for me to talk about. So Google basically has two ways of indexing. So the, in the first way, it crawls the page, it fetches the SSR content, and it's going to go ahead and do the indexing of your page whenever you have just like an HTML. And then again, it's going to rerun the indexing and just new links to be crawled. So that's the first way of indexing. However, for JavaScript powered application, because you have an empty HTML and all of the rendering happens in the front end. The rendering takes place when the resources are available. So when the Google bots come in and they find that the HTML is empty, so they wait for some time. They will wait for some rendering to happen when the, dog, when the elements are created with JavaScript. However, if it finds that no, those elements are not available, it's going to go off and it's going to return that after some time to do the indexing again. So for JavaScript rendered application, the indexing can happen whenever the Google bot uh, resources are available later on. So after how long do you think the second wave of indexing happens? So I'm going to give you some of the uh, choices. So I would say to you that this indexing happens like after a few seconds. That's the first option. Second option is it happens after one day. And third is it happens after one week. So how many of you say the second wave of indexing happens uh, in a few seconds. Raise your hand. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, nice. After one day. After one week. So, what about the rest of the people? When do you think the will happen? Never. Okay. So, guys, let me tell you, I played a trick. All of the answers are incorrect. <laughs> Sorry about the people who raised their hand. So, we don't know. Answer is right here. If there is rendering text place when the resources become available. Because Google bots resources are limited. Okay, so whenever the resources are available, it will come back. It may come back after you know, a few days or a week or month, we don't know about that. So that's why there is a concern that you know what happens to if I build my application with create React app and when Google comes in, it doesn't find any content, it finds empty estimates. What do you do about it? So we here to discuss about that. So rendering of JavaScript power website is deferred until Google Bot has the resources available to process the content. We discussed this. 
So now, now there is something called server side rendering and client side rendering. So, who already knows what is server side rendering? Kya hota hai? Okay, good. Client side rendering? So let's talk about WordPress. WordPress में क्या होता है? So let's say WordPress में you have a PHP server, right? You have a PHP code, database project, all of that happens in PHP server. And when you access the URL the first time, every time the page load होता है, at that time you will have your HTML that is generated by the server with all of the code, all that, all of the data. So Google is happy that you got the HTML, you got the content, no problem. The second time uh, of course, on the home page, you will have links like about and contact us. So, let's say the user clicks the second uh, link, so second URL. Again, the same process happens, and even the third time also. So, this is not really good. Why? Because every time the user hits the URL, what happens? The page reloads. So, not a very good experience because all of the DOMs are removed, and then a fresh page is loaded, which means you have to access the server again get out of the data, get out of the page. So the experience is not really good. Now, I'm sure you must have seen mobile apps, which are native apps, right? What happens in native apps? You click it and you straight away into it, right? So how can we achieve that kind of experience? Now, this is called server-side rendering. Now, there's something called client-side rendering. So we came up with something called client-side rendering, where all of the code and the logic happens inside the server. You have inside the server you have empty HTML and JavaScript file, and when the user hits the URL, it sends an empty HTML, and then, example, you are using a React, then it is going to execute that React, it is going to download the JavaScript, execute React, build all of the elements, and then the page will be shown. And if there is uh, some data that you want to fetch from REST API, etc., so you can access the API, get the data, and show that content to the user. When the second URL is hit, uh, it doesn't go to the server. So the request doesn't go to the server. You have some client side routing, <coughs> which means that you have all of the content again accessed with the help of REST API and it will be shown. So the server will not be hit for another request. So it feels like a native application because user clicks on it and it's straight into it. There is no page reload that happens. And this is what is called client side rendering. So let's do a recap. Now in server-side rendering, page is viewable. So when the page loads, it's viewable because you already have HTML coming from the server. Then the JavaScript is loaded. This is typically how it happens in WordPress. And then the page becomes viewable and interactable. So initially, user can at least see what the content. Maybe you cannot interact with it. Maybe you cannot have those JavaScript interactions. But at least you can see the page. So that's good for us. In Client side branding, you have an antibody. Then the JavaScript is loaded, and then finally become the page becomes viewable and interactable. So is that good or bad guys? Good? Bad, right? Okay. You try to raise your hand, say something. Okay. So let's take a look. So the good parts of SSR is the page is viewable and interactable. So you can at least see the page, so you see your content. The bad thing is that on every new request, the page gets reloaded. It's not a good experience for the user. For client side rendering, the good part is that the client can do the navigation without the page reload, just like in native apps. The bad part is that you have an empty HTML, which is not good for what? SEO. Absolutely. I'm glad you guys are understanding everything. That means I'm doing a good job. Okay, so what if we can take the best of both worlds? We can combine these two. So if you want to combine these two, what do you want to take? You want to take the, this part out of SSR, what do you want to take out of the CSR? You guys tell me. Client side navigation without page reload, which means I'm going to cross all of this, I don't need these two. I'm going to build something together where I just take the page viewable and interactable out of SSR and then I take the client side navigation and this will be called SSR plus CSR. Okay, so we take the best of both worlds and we build an application with server-side rendering and client-side rendering as well. So let's see how we do that. So over here what will happen is that 
we can have more so when JavaScript can be executed. And the estimate pages are built from the server itself. So when the client sees your application, he will at least be able to see some content. And then finally when it reaches the client, then we do the client side rendering, which means the pages are interactable and also they can connect with the API and get all of the data. Now let's talk about building JavaScript teams with WordPress. So now since we understand that using JavaScript on the front end is going to give us performance, scalability, extensibility and you know, ease of building. Let's talk about why do we use JavaScript theme for WordPress? Why is WordPress? So first thing that gives you modern, fast and engaging experience as we discussed. With CSR, rendering happens on your device than the server. So it feels like a native app, just an ETA for what we discussed. Adding JavaScript to your PHP theme can be difficult to maintain. Which means that if you want to build the JavaScript application, you want to keep everything in PHP, then it could be difficult to manage both of them together. So if we separate them, like having a front end complete in JavaScript, then it will be easy for us to maintain. Okay. Now what is the problem using JavaScript themes? So let's say we have a PHP server. This is our current state of WordPress. We have a PHP theme. We have HTML and then browser can render your HTML and JavaScript. But if I want to run JavaScript theme into PHP server, can PHP server run JavaScript? No, right? So which means just going to give me an empty HTML and some JavaScript file, you have to wait for the browser to execute it. So what we can do is we can have a Node.js server which is able to run JavaScript. And then we can have the content already available. And then we can have the front end with whatever the client side uh, client side rendering that we spoke about. Now, so everything is good, we all understand we can do server side rendering and have a better experience because user will be able to see the content. But how do we actually do it? So if you had to do it yourself, this is all the code you need to write. Again, there is more to it. But I'm not going to go ahead and explain everything over here. This is just to let you know that if you want to do it yourself, this is how you do it in React. So what is the other way if I don't want to write all of the codes? Well, the other way is that we can use JavaScript frameworks. So can some of you tell me about some JavaScript frameworks names? So one I do know is Gatsby. How many of you guys have heard of Gatsby? Okay, many of you. Any other frameworks? Sorry? Electron. 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 Okay. Next year, you said next year? Okay, great. What else? You have Razzle. What else? Okay. Guys, we have Frank Kitty. That one we're going to talk about. <laughs> okay. Alright. So, choices are available for JavaScript member. First is your Gatsby. Now, let's understand. Uh, which one to take for? Because right now we have so many options available to build our theme, choose our framework, but how do we know what to choose it from? There is so much to learn in this world, right? But sometimes we are not able to decide what is going to be beneficial for us. So that's why we are here to talk about what are the frameworks available, what is their offer, and based on your client's needs or your needs, you can actually choose the framework that's best suit your needs. So again, uh, Gatsby is a React framework. Uh, it already provides SSR out of the box, which means you don't have to write all of the code for server side rendering, it already handles that by default. Then it's a static side generator. Uh, who knows what a static side generator is? Okay, so it seems that a lot of these concepts are new to you guys, which means that I've got a lot of work to do. That's great. So static side generator basically means that all of your files are generated statically at the build time and they are already available uh, when you, the user access your the particular URL. So if, if the user access your website, the pages are already generated beforehand at the build time. So it is good because the page is already available and it is going to be really fast. Use for general use uh, works with WordPress if you know GraphQL. How many of you know GraphQL? Okay, one, you know graph here, awesome. Who else? Okay. So that means not good, right? Then if you don't know graph here, you won't be able to work with Gatsby, but graph here is really good if you learn it. There are a lot of things that you can do with it. Then uh, some of you guys said next year, so yes, that's on the list. Again, the 
React framework, Opel SR out of the box. Uh, it's also serverless. Serverless, what's the matter? Serverless, what's the matter? Okay, so serverless means that uh, serverless doesn't mean that it doesn't have any server. It's just that you don't have to manage your server on your own. Uh, you are going to use somebody else's server, which is going to be useful because uh, if there is not a lot of traffic on your site, then you don't really need to spend too much on that. It will scale automatically. So if there is more traffic, there is going to be more servers available to handle that traffic. So, so you don't have to worry about anything on handling this. So I will use manual connection to REST API. Then you have Trinity, which we are going to talk about today. It's also a React framework. Opal SR out of the box, ready for serverless as well. Focus on WordPress and works with WordPress out of the box. Then if you want to work with uh, Vue, then you can use uh, Nuxt as well, which is again of course using all of these methods. So let's talk about Frontity. So Frontity again is a, it's a framework that we provide. It's an open source framework to develop WordPress themes based on React here. So all, all of the frameworks that we saw, Frontity is the one who is completely focused on WordPress. So if you want to work build the uh, React theme in WordPress, you can use Frontity. And the best part is that it's very easy to use. You, it doesn't require any special configuration or special setup. You don't need to be uh, having a lot of technical knowledge to use it. If you want to have your a website in React and you, you want to give your users a native like experience, fast experience, all you have to do is just install it with a couple of commands and then you can just mention your WordPress site URL which will be kind of a test and then it will automatically fetch all of the content using the REST API. So with minimal coding required, you can use this framework. So how does it actually work? So you have WordPress which is your content editor as a backend. It accesses the data with the help of REST API and in the front end you have your React theme which runs in Node.js server. And then it produces the HTML content and will be supported later on should be coming in future as well. So how does SSR and CSR work in Frontity? So let's take a look to play this video. Okay, so you have a front end and let's say that this is a user when they access the first URL, it goes and accesses the data from the backend using server side rendering, it accesses the data and produces that and sends that to the browser. The second time when the user hits the new URL, it will go ahead and do the client side rendering and just get all of the data using the REST API from the backend. Okay, so use this WordPress dashboard for content management, which means all we're going to do is just use our WordPress for, as a content management system. All of the front end will happen in React using Frontity. Auto update of the content on the front end without having to rebuild. So one of the key differences between Gatsby and Frontity is that uh, when you're using Gatsby and if you update some content, like if you add a new post, you have to go and rebuild. Which, however, in Frontity, even if you add a new post to WordPress dashboard, it will automatically be updated in the front end. So Frontend app lives in Node.js server, so like we discussed that we can run JavaScript in Node.js server, so that's what it uses. And in future, it will be capable of generating AMP pages with the same React code and CSS. <coughs> Why should you use it? It's the first React framework 100% focused on WordPress. Zero setup, setup development, as we discussed. Extensibility. Uh, why extensibility? Because, uh, of course, you might, guys might be thinking that I've got lots of plugins in WordPress. So, how does that work in front end? So, with Frontend, you have some of the packages available, uh, and you can also build your own packages. So, if some of the features are not supported, like from plugins, the features are not supported, you can build your own packages in Frontend as well to support that. And it offers server side rendering out of the box. It's rendered dynamically. Uh, it also offers code splitting. So who knows what code splitting is? Nice. Come on. Code splitting is basically when you are actually fetching JavaScript uh, for the first time. 
you did not, uh, you do not uh, apply the complete JavaScript. You can pull the JavaScript in chunks. That is actually a good thing. Okay, great. That's clap for Sahil. Awesome. Guys, I want more hands. I want more people to say answers. It's okay if this one correct. It's completely fine. Okay, so Frontier uses Webpack uh, to do the code splitting, and like Sahil said, code splitting means that you may not necessarily want to load all of the code. So, for example, on home page, if you only want certain amount of code for your application to work, you don't want to load everything and make the packet size uh, larger because more the packet size, then it's going to take more time to load. So, that's what it does out of the box. And the best part is that you don't have to handle all of this on your own. And 100% Lighthouse score. Lighthouse score is a good one, right? You can raise your hand for that. Lighthouse score? Any other? Pata any other? Okay. So, Lighthouse is basically if you go to uh, your Chrome browser, if you do an inspect element and it, it on the uh, in application network, uh, application I think, and audit, sorry. If you hit on audit, then uh, you can click on run audits and it actually does the auditing of your site and tells you what is your site's performance, what is the page load speed, and what are the things you need to improve for accessibility and things like that. So, Frontity achieve, you can achieve uh, up to 100% Lighthouse score with Frontity. So, basically having a fast website. Uh, I've built a Frontity 2019 theme, so there are ready made uh, themes available. Uh, there's mass theme that it comes with the installed that you can use. Uh, and I've also built the theme package for 2019 theme. You can just uh, install it and it's ready to use. You guys know about the 2019 theme, right? Of WordPress. Right? So, the best part is that you can have that in there. So, it's going super fast. I've also built the contact form seven package. So, you must be wondering what, I, what happens to my contact form. What if I have inquiry form or contact form that I want to use? How does that work in React? Like I said, Frontend is extensible. You can extend it by creating packages for the things that you want it to support. So, I've created this package called Frontend Contact Form 7. You just need to install it. And whenever you create a form in your WordPress dashboard, that form will automatically be showing here on Frontend. You just have to mention the page name where you want uh, that form in this place. What about WooCommerce? How do you think WooCommerce will work? On the other side. That is there? Okay. Okay, you're suggesting. Okay. So who promised me that again? Login page the banana thing is fine. We have mentioned the URLs and everything. We can have all of the blocks listed. But we have uh who commerce also, right? And how do you do that? So at RTM, we have written something called WP decoupled. So this is not frontity by the way, it is using Next.js as a framework. And it is using GraphQL to access the data using the WP GraphQL plugin. And you can see that the entire store is in React. And one of the best things is that it also works offline. So this is going to give you a good user experience because let's say you are traveling, you go on an airplane, you are selecting some products, some shopping, uh, and then even if you go offline, you are still able to select the product and keep them ready. And then whenever the vendor comes back, we can just place them on. That saves time for you, isn't it? Yes? Great. You can check it out if you're doing this quite cool. Okay. Now we will talk about installation and setup. I hope my laptop is ready for that. So if you guys want to go along, I'm assuming uh, you have Node.js already installed. If you don't have it installed, I think you can install it now. Just Look at how things are done. It's pretty simple and easy. Just couple of commands. So also, if you have WordPress installed, if you don't have WordPress installed, it's completely fine. If you have your WordPress site hosted somewhere, you just need the URL for that WordPress. Cool. So let's start. So you can go to frontend.org. There's a documentation available as well. How to set it up. So the first thing you do is just run this command called npx. Frontity create. Okay, let me just check if my internet is So it's going to install the Frontity CLI uh, and also create a Frontity application. And the name of that application is going to be my app. And you just go into that particular app. So you just run, run multiple commands together. Oh. 
Once that is done, then we would open that into a code editor. So I just got some of the settings available as well. So you have uh, the settings page where you can mention your site URL. So here it says test.funnery.io. So here you can mention your own site URL. And then let this WP JSON be there the way it is because that is to access your data with the help of REST API in JSON format. Okay, so you can see it's installing all the dependencies and it's cloning the mask theme. The mask theme comes by default. If you would like to learn WordPress, uh, you can go to so this is the website that I am building and here you have different blogs available, you have some free courses if you want to learn React, if you want to learn Gutenberg uh, or Laravel, Redux, Gatsby. So I kind of give all of the lessons absolutely free and these are all available on YouTube as well. Okay, so it's done. So let's take a look. So I'm going to open this application into the core editor. Okay, so if we take a look, if you look at the package.json, you have the name of the package which is my app and you can run these scripts. So all I can do is just do quantity or I can just do npm run dev and it started with the development server for us where our JavaScript application will be hosted. So it will be hosted on the uh, local host 3000 and here you will be able to see your WordPress content uh, in React using Frontier. So if you go to Frontier.settings, this is the place where you will uh, mention your site URL. So for example, if my site URL is xyz.com, my WordPress site, I will just go to it over here. And these are going to be your pages, WordPress pages. So let's say you have a home page, you have Nature for categories, you have travel, you have about us. So just need to mention your WordPress site to our over here. And automatically it's going to fetch all of the content. So you can see that this is the WordPress content coming from the REST API. So you have home page, you have nature, you have travel, so all of this. Okay, so let's take a look what's happening over here. So this is the settings, you can change the title of your site, so you can put let's say Camp Kochi yeah, Workshop and if you save it and if you check over here, you can see the title has changed now. Anyone's uh, got their WordPress website? Uh, hosted somewhere, you can give me the URL and show you that it's fetching the content from there. Anyone wants to try? Their WordPress 
website where they have blogs? No? Okay. You, somebody is raising hand. Okay. 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 What's the URL?
So how many people are comfortable with React? Just one, two, three. Okay. The rest of you have never worked with React? You have at least a basic idea of what React is? Yeah. So React is basically a JavaScript library and it is super fast. The reason why it's fast is because it uses a concept called virtual DOM. Now you know that DOM query is quite expensive. So what it does is instead of doing a direct DOM query, it creates two copies of the DOM, which it calls a virtual DOM. Virtual DOM is nothing but it's an object, a JavaScript object. And whenever there's a change in the UI, for example, uh, if you click a button and some content changes on the website, then it's going to go ahead and compare that those changes between those two, two copies. So it's not going to compare it with the real DOM. If it finds there's a change, it's going to go ahead and update the real DOM, otherwise it won't update it. So, so because it's not doing a direct DOM query, it makes it really fast. So in React, you have like components. So these are your components. So you have this mask name, it takes some configuration like the name of the package, the roots. So in create React app, if you work for it, you already know that uh, it has a div with an ID of root where we inject our content. So this is that code particularly, and you can have multiple packages being inserted here. Then you have the state. So people who have worked with React, they know that uh, there's something called state available. Now state allow you to manage the data within your application or components. So Fluttery has its own state uh, that you can use between multiple components. And then again, you have got some configuration like theme, menu, etc. I hope our audience is already deployed now, deployed now. So if you go over here, check it. And this URL, by the way, is, is active. So anyone wants to check it can do that. There you go. And your website is live. Good? Yeah. And I will have the reason all your blogs live. So I hope it's so many people to reflect. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, let's look at the performance. So this is what I was talking about guys. So this is basically your lighthouse. Earlier lighthouse was available somewhere else. Uh, like you have to go on a separate site to check who the audits. Google is now providing that inbuilt in your inspect element audit app. If you just do the audits. Lighthouse are warming up. Getting all the information is checking the best practices. You have accessibility, you have SEO. Uh, just going to check all of that for you. So you guys are aware that if if you come on the website and if it takes more than three seconds to load, what do you do? So you just leave that website, right? You try to go on another website. So this is why performance matters. This is why we all are here for you. If you want a website to be fast and give a rich user experience, a rich and Okay, let it load for now. I'll just continue with the. Okay, then we have this library. So, this is a library available uh, which is called HTML to React. What it does is because the content of the WordPress uh, is coming in HTML, we need to convert it into React. So, what HTML to React is going to do is we're going to convert that into uh, React. So, for example, you have a processor available. So, whenever it finds an image, we're going to convert that into an image. Uh, React components. Okay, I think it's not able to give it just now. I have to do it again in case the network is okay. Okay, then we have multiple components available over here. So, this is the theme that we are using. So, if I go to the index.js, okay, so this is our theme basically. You know, you've got all of the data that is being shown over here. So, if I go to console, you have State available inside of the country. So you need to check country dot state. <coughs> so inside of the state, you have different things available. For example, you have router. So depending on which page you are on, this link would change. So this thing automatically updates your URL. So if you go on slash about, then this will probably be slash about. Then you have the source, where again all of this data 
data is available. You have posts available, so you can see all of this content is coming from the REST API. And you don't have to worry about the REST API stuff. You just have to mention your site URL and configure is going to do all of the uh, thing for you, which is accessing the data, WordPress data with, with the REST API. So you can see you have author detail, you have page, t-shirt media, uh, meta, all of this is into JSON format, now it's in available in object format, and we just loop it through here with all of that information. Okay. How many of you say that it 
the only clear in JavaScript application. Awesome. Absolutely right, guys. So, your Google address code is going to go over here somewhere, wherever you want to put in the head tag, for example. So, because error case is going to happen here, and the front end is here, it's being upright now. So, your front end is clear now. So, whatever you want to do with the front end, you have to put it over here. Awesome. Uh, I think this is not looking great right now because it's not really working. So, Awesome. Do you guys have any questions? No questions? One question. Can we pull data from Azure? Pull data from? Azure. Multiple. This means kind of, uh, I can't say that. Yeah, uh, actually, no, I would say that because you just are supposed to provide one side to us. Uh, but if you have multi site, there is an option in Fraternity that you can configure and have multiple sites uh, configuration done. But uh, if you want to do it from multiple sites, then probably you will do something like Kafka, uh, probably something like Gatsby, which allows you to have data from multiple sources. Any other question? Yes. Can you? Pretty simple. Come over here. So, at the moment we don't have anything like that, but then yes, if we want to go ahead and build some package, we can build a package for that as well. But currently, this is how the network works, just mentioned over here.